The Bigger Picture on BFM 89.9, The Business Station. Splinter is one of the first co-productions for Chamber 6, mm-hmm. which is a company you set up. Um, and uh, Edward, uh, Michael, you, my Edward, you were, um, you were the actor in Splinter, am mm-hmm. I correct? Correct, yeah. How long was that like, working together? You directing and your dad acting. I just showed up, made sure the cameras were there and the crew was there. And came and, and <laughs> was it difficult? No, no, no. I mean, you know, um, uh, someone at his level of work as an actor, you just, I mean, just speaking in general as a director, you just, uh, you want them, let them do their things. The other thing, which is uh, they'll bring it to a level that uh, you can't even imagine uh, the way they interpret the work. So I knew that going in that he would come in and, and, and do something fantastic and I just wanted to to allow that and to make it comfortable for him to do that. Because that was, I don't know if I came across like that, but that was... Uh, no, you were very, very confident and very strong. It was a, uh, an honor and a privilege, to, first of all, to be in this industry and to be you know, working on a film with your children is fantastic. All of us, yeah, all of his brothers were in it, his wife was in it. We were all in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was great. I wanted the best. <laughs> Why not? It's just the both of you. Tell us about the family. Oh, he's one of six. And uh, he's the oldest. And Mikey's uh, and then his brother Nico. And his brother uh, Brandon and his brother Bodie and then his sister to Nico. Are they all in the industry as well? All except for one. Just one, two. My two daughters are not. I uh, wish they would. Hopefully they'll be artists in some way. But um, as of right now, they're not. In, in, but they're the only ones. My daughter in law is my. Everybody. All the kids. Yes. Okay. Um, how has the worldwide film industry evolved in your eyes? Um, I think we're really at an interesting precipice um, so far as the new media. Um, I think, you know, it's, uh, obviously we all know that it's sort of uh, level the playing field a little from post production, you know, from capturing the image to editing the image to delivering the image online or mobile content or, you know, YouTube, any of these platforms. And it's really interesting uh, to watch and to be a part of it. I mean, it's affecting our industry, like for example, the music industry was crippled by it, but it's 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 rediscovering how to, you know, re, it's reforming in an interesting way. It's more democratic for the artist, which is great. Um, and uh, what's 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 great about it, though, for us, or what's interesting, is the fact that since everyone went out and, and made content, even the the, the 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 public that's making content, they're becoming better storytellers. So it raises the bar for all of us, yeah. and, and that's really exciting for me. Well, I, I have to agree with everything Michael said. And uh, add to it only that uh, the need for uh, audiovisual events, whether it be on film, television, or internet, uh, is now becoming even more so. The product is made much more now. work consuming it much quicker right now. The whole planet is. And it's now become a, a very small world. Uh, the communications are becoming better and better. Technology is pushing us to the point of where we're interconnected now. There's no more borders. And uh, they're trying to keep us <laughs> in some form of uh, capability of handling regions, you know, they being people who want to commercialize and make, you know, certain uh, constrictions of, of their people. Uh, whether it be political or spiritual or a financial, economical reason, whatever the reason, they're still trying to hold on to those borders. And uh, it, it's very quickly in there. The social networks, Facebook, uh, you know, MySpace, uh, all these different incredible, incredible communication bases for the entire planet are getting stronger and stronger. I think it, from the last that I heard, there was over 500 million people on Facebook mm-hmm. and growing. So, uh, it's going to become uh, 
a more needed understanding. And now with the advent of telephones that uh, are able to uh, take on the streaming, and uh, people are now getting into watching, you know, like they watch or listen to a three-minute song, they'll watch a three-minute video and or webisode yeah. that is created specifically for that medium of tele telephones. How does that make you feel though? when you grew up in an entirely different era? Oh yeah, I'm pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> I know I look good, but you do, you do. <laughs> yeah, but I am old. Okay. Um, and uh, in many ways, uh, it makes me feel fantastic because I'm here to watch it. And I remember when there was no television, and then television appeared. I remember very well when there were no computers, and the computers appeared. I remember uh, when there were no cell phones, and cell phones appeared. Wireless technology, and now we're into an advancement that is so complete that there's nobody on the planet how fast we're going. It's all so out of control of any one single group or individual that it's mind-boggling. Because just when one person thinks that he's got a new concept and idea, uh, the day after that, somebody else has augmented it and it's become something completely different. And it's a moving at a rate. Uh, I was talking to a brilliant rocket scientist and he says, uh, technology's moving in about every other day, it changes. And I said, uh, I don't understand. He goes, yeah, every other day, technology is changing. It's advancing. It's moving. It's a living entity. And it's going to continue to do that. And we cannot stop it. People are not going to stop. It's, it's, a, it's a Pandora's box. It's been open. And it will continue to grow. Now, what happens with it? You know, like the goods, the goodness of it and versus the negativeness of it. Um, is really the question, and we're using it right now at our whim. And inevitably, they will try to take it out of our control, meaning that people will put harnesses on it or try to, and uh, it's really destructive. I mean, the more we are able to communicate as a human species, the more we'll be able to understand each other and relate to one another. And that's what we need to do. We need to be in contact. The human population needs to share its experiences and we need to know what uh, uh, governments are doing what uh, uh, leaders are doing what uh, greatness is being done on the planet as well as negativeness is being done and that people have to be able to speak freely and that that's really really going to be an issue and you'll see it even mounting even more and more and not that you know, foretelling the future it's not about that it's about just knowing that with communication comes uh, value, uh, understanding, and that with those values and understandings come uh, moral fiber and <laughs> deciphering which way one wants to decide to live. Empowerment. Yeah, empowerment everybody. Michael, what made you realize the power of filmmaking? Um, well, besides the fact that that tells me of the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the most, the most powerful the audio, the audiovisual is the most powerful uh, tool on the planet. Um, but those, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a rough quote from him, and it, it's true. But um, I, you know, it is uh, as a, as a viewer, as an audience member, I always found it to be the most powerful. Uh, the most enjoyable um, medium for me, uh, television and film. Um, I think when I discovered this true power on a personal level was when I made something. First time I made something and put it out there and and interacted with an audience uh, where people came and told me they didn't like it or came up and told me why or told me they loved it and told me how to change this or how they reflected on it or it affected them. I realized on a personal level how powerful it is and what the responsibility is as a storyteller. Okay. 